So here's what's up. I've got some LEDs now around the tail right here for orientation and some on the wing tips that are solid. So solid lights on the wing tips so we can see what's going on and solid lights around the tail right here to help with orientation. So let's just take a look at that and see how I did it. Now this didn't require any extra wire for the wingtips. I just put these solid lights right there on the wingtips and then there was a short piece of wire here because these are running off 12 volts and the ones on the wingtips are running on 3.8. Anyway, let's just look into it and I'll show you how I did it. Now here's what a finished wingtip looks like. So I've got two solid LEDs on the top side and on the bottom side of the wing. So two on the top and two on the bottom. And this is the addressable strip that is sequencing through the different patterns. And this is soldered right onto there. So I'm going to show you in just a second how that's done. So to get started, we need to cut off a section of 12 volt LED strip like this. Now this is actually two segments with three LEDs on each segment. So there's three on this segment and three on that segment. And the idea is to solder it right here across the ground and 3.8 volts. This is supposed to be 5, but it comes out 3.8 volts. So we'll be soldering it like that. But of course, these won't light up with only 3.8 volts. So that's the next step. We need to reconfigure this to run off 3.8 volts. So here's the 12 volt strip that we're going to be working on. Now, maybe someone knows where we could get a strip already pre-made to work off 3.8 volts, but I wasn't able to find anything. I don't think the 5 volt strips would be bright enough with only 3.8 volts. So, the only choice was just to custom make one. Now, what I'm going to do is wire up these first two LEDs on each of the segments right here. And put a resistor to each one, so each one is individual paralleled across the voltage. Now the way these 12 volt strips work is there's actually 12 volts running along one side here on a bus and ground running along the other side and it goes the full length of the strip. And I've got it sort of upside down here the way I'm going to work with it is the 12 volts will be on the bottom and the ground will be on the top. So just let me show you a little diagram here. So if we put the 12 volts right along here. That represents that edge of the strip. That's the bus. And then we put the ground up here. So now we got both ground and voltage running the full length of the strip. And that doesn't matter how long your strip is. Okay, now you've got three LEDs usually in a cluster. So one, two, three, like that. Now over here there is a resistor attached to ground on one end. So I'm just going to go here and draw in one resistor and connect it there. Okay, and then that just daisy chains down to all three LEDs like that. So all three are connected in series between the two buses with a resistor. But we can't use it that way because these have too much breakover voltage to run off 3.8 volts with all three of them in a row. So we got to separate it. Now to make things a little simpler, I just went ahead and eliminated one from the, from the process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically break this etch here. I'm not going to use this LED. And what I'm going to do is run a resistor. Let me get black here. So a resistor right here to light that one. And then I'm going to run another resistor off that ground to light this one. And this one's going to be disconnected totally. I'm just going to, I'm just going to cut that etch. So I won't use this light at all. So obviously I'm also going to have to run... 12 volts over to this one since this is cut right here so I'm going to run 12 volts to that one too. I'm going to make a little wire to go to that one so then they're all between the bus just like that. 
So that's how it's going to work. And now because the breakover voltage is less and so I only have one LED to deal with, I can now run it off the 3.8 volts that I need to use for the Radian glider. That means I can connect it directly to the strip that's already in place and not have to run new wires to get my solid lit LEDs. So the first thing I need to do is separate the LEDs by cutting this center connector between the center etch between it. And the easiest way I've found to do that is to use one of these leather punches. And I can just put the leather punch right over the etch. I don't know if you can see that, but right over the etch like that, sort of in the center. It doesn't have to be exact because we're not going to solder to it or anything. But right over the etch, and then just press and cut a hole there, like that. And then you can clean it up with an X-Acto blade. It's already loose, but the sticky paper on the back is holding it. And I can do that in two places, although you really don't need to do this second place. This is for the other cluster, or other segment. Just do that. Okay, now I'm going to clean out those holes with an X-Acto blade. Now the first thing I'm going to do is solder this end of the ground resistor right here to the ground pad and then I'm going to bring this wire around and solder it to this side of the LED right over here. And what I usually do is hold it down with some tape while I'm soldering. I'm heating up the soldering iron and I'm going to go ahead and just solder the lead of the resistor to the ground pad right here. Just like that. That's all you got to do. And then I'll bend this one over to this side of the LED and solder it. Okay, I bent this lead around and I've just soldered it to the other side of that LED. I've got a 5 volt U back here and it's on a battery. And I'm just going to give this a little test to see if the LED lights. Now this is a little bit too much voltage for it, but we just want to see if it's connected. Yep, did you see it blink? Okay, so we know it works. Okay, now we need to run a wire, and there's usually a piece of lead left over that we snipped off the original resistor. So I'm just going to run a piece of that lead from the 12 volts over here to this side to energize this LED. Okay, now we're ready to solder the other end. You don't want to put a whole lot of heat on these or spend too much time just get a little bead of solder on there check it to make sure it's actually connected if it isn't connected hit it again all right now i'm going to solder a second resistor from ground it's right here and i'm running the wire down here and soldering it right here to ground and then the other end is going to go to this side of the second led it's not impossible it's just a little finicky all right, so that's that one. Now I'll just have to bend this around and solder it on there. Okay, just got done soldering that one on. Now I'm using a common 47 ohm resistors for this. Or you could use anything like you could use a 58 or whatever you can come up with that's around 50 ohms. That's all you need. Now this time let's put the voltage on this end of the strip just to show that the voltage does go all the way down the strip to these two LEDs. Let's see if they light. Yeah. So we know we don't want to keep them on too long because 5 volts is more voltage than we really want to put on them. We're going to be using 3.8 as I said. Okay, so we know they work. So the next phase is just to do the same thing to these two LEDs here. So here's the finished strip. And you can see I did punch a hole out with a leather punch between each of the LEDs right here. Just to make sure there was no connection between them. There we go. And that's how it looks. So I'm not using that third one. So now we can solder this end to the addressable strip on the left wing of the aircraft. So I've covered my LED strip that I made with some of this clear packing tape from Scotch and that's just to protect it. And you can see where I just soldered the pads from this strip to the pads on the addressable strip. So the addressable strip is putting out about 3.8 volts. I don't know why. So I've configured this to run off 3.8 volts. 
Okay, now let's give it a try. I'm going to throw the switch. And there we go. So you can see the addressable strips are blinking away here, but these are solid. So that'll give us better orientation when we're flying. And I've got red here on the left wing and green over on the right wing. And what I'm going to do is fold this around so I have two of these LEDs on the bottom and two on the top and then just cover it. So I'm going to put some lights around the tail, but this time I think I'm going to use 12 volt lights because it's just a short distance. Shouldn't add much weight by adding some small skinny wires. And then I'll just attach them to the UBEC right here where the 12 volts comes in. And that's just a short distance. I ran this fence wire through there as a snake and it comes out right here. So I should be able to attach a couple wires to that and pull them back through. So the lights are wired in here now with the UBEC and I've actually got a ring of 12 volt lights right around here. So I got red on this side and then on the right side you can see green. So I think that's going to really show up at night and as the plane rolls you can go between red and green to get a feel for the orientation. So that's on the tail and of course we have the lights on the tips of the wings too, they're solid. I think that'll work. And of course when you turn off the switch these go off too. When you turn off this switch inside the plane that is like that they all go out so that's a wrap and i think it looks pretty good with that ring of lights around the end of the fuselage there and the solid strips out at the end of the wing tips so don't forget to subscribe and and hit the notify checkbox under the bell icon because you'll probably want to find out what's in that mysterious box that i showed you in the past video